How's it gaming, guys? I'm filling the blanks, and Summer Game Fest just happened, and they showed off the second trailer, or I guess the first full trailer of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is the remake part two. And uh, the trailer was really great. They showed um, a surprising amount, which is really nice. Um, I was really worried, worried it was going to be another teaser, but it ended up being pretty chock full of information without giving away too, too, too much, which is absolutely fantastic. And I figured it'd be fun to kind of look at it uh, as, as a guy who's played a lot of Final Fantasy VII, uh, like the original one, and had a lot of strong opinions on, on Remake, uh, both good and bad. I thought it'd be fun to kind of look through it and, and slowly take it in. If you haven't already seen it, I do suggest obviously watching it before hearing me prattle on about nothing. Um, but let's, yeah, let's take a look at it, and uh, I'll be pausing and, and going back and forth and stuff. There will obviously be spoilers uh, for Remake and the original Final Fantasy VII as well, just a heads up, obviously. So, yeah, so <laughs> it starts off with uh, this part here, which is obviously the aftermath of the, the like, Whispers fight you had uh, in the first one. Except there's Barrett, there's Tifa, uh, there's Red 13 in a second there. Uh, and you'll see Aerith in a moment, and they're all dead. And that's obviously not what happened uh, at all, because, you know, in at the end of Remake, you fight Destiny or whatever, and then you fought Sephiroth. And the big rumor has been that the game is now two timelines because Zack is looking like he survives, uh, which he doesn't in the original game. And this is obviously huge, uh, like, like almost a confirmation for this, that you're seeing this timeline where... Th the main characters died. Clear, weird, weirdly enough, you don't see Cloud there, which is a little odd. But then you see the Black Feather. There's there's this, the the symbol of Sephiroth, basically. So that's pretty cool. You get to see that kind of uh, other timeline. I'm assuming Zack will probably appear very quickly there. And maybe that's why Cloud's not there. Maybe this is like, I don't know, in that timeline, Cloud didn't get to, I don't know, them. And then he's with still with Zack or something. Anyways, we keep going. And the unknown journey continues. And you, then you see first part of like actual stuff after seven uh remake and and you can see they're coming out of i was i would assume this is mithril mines uh is where they're coming out of i mean i, I would assume because then you see this nice big open world so this is probably the area from mithril mines to junon uh or junin however you want to pronounce it it is cool to see like the windmills here uh and you see like this area right over here uh in the original game there there's really only just the Fort Condor and Fort Condor was Fort, yeah, Fort Condor was like a mini game in the uh, intermission DLC, which is a really fun little mini game. But I, I kind of wondered how they were gonna put in the Fort Condor stuff. And we don't see Fort Condor in this, but you do see a lot of little little pieces of civilization. It. And it's, it's look so how gorgeous strong. it looks! It looks absolutely fantastic. Just but great. Reality, it's barely hanging on. Oh, looks great. So we're seeing like open world gameplay, open world ish, but I mean like clearly you can you can walk around a lot up here. It's 485 meters to a side quest. So like it's clearly very large. Like that's that's a lot. You get some wildlife over there. Where's he been? I'm not sure where this is. I'm not sure if this is um I think this might be the forest of me. Maybe that's where you, you meet Yuffie. In the original game, Yuffie was a secret character that wasn't super secret. I guess more like a hidden character than secret. And this could be like the forest where you meet her. Uh, it doesn't have to be near Junon in the original game, but that's the first time you can. Any overworld part of the game that had a forest, you could meet Yuffie. So I'm assuming that's what this is for, is when you meet her. I would assume. And then you have the Choco, Chocobo area, which looks fantastic. That's right before the... Um, uh, where the, the Midgar Zolem is where the Mithril Mine is. Here you get some, some Chocobo stuff. You see, it's weird Weird here. You have four characters with you, never... which you never had in the original game uh, or in the remake. And up here you also see a yellow a yellow marker. So originally the blue marker like this one here marked the, the goal to continue the story in that kind of weird, like, very faint purple one. Uh, our side quest. So who knows what the yellow one is? It almost looks like a chocobo track up here. So it could be something like that. Got some controls here, of course. Got some ruins, which I think might be the Fort Condor esque, um, like remains. Because in the original game, it was just Fort Condor. That was it. But that was a huge battlefield originally. So it makes sense that there's ruins about it. And then we fast forward way, way, much, much further in the game. Uh, to Cosmo Canyon with Bugenhagen. And this is great. This is such an iconic part of the game. Bugenhagen sounds exactly like I expected. It looks fantastic. It still has the awesome classes. 
did a great job there. And here we're back, I would assume the Mithril Mines, and you can still see how huge this place is. That's almost a kilometer uh, right there. I'm assuming this is the Mithril Mines simply because that blue... I mean, it's it's life streamy, and you see the life stream a lot in FF7, but the Mithril Mines had areas that looked like this. And uh, if you go back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut up for like two seconds, but I think that's saying talking there. Uh, me and my buddy Josh were talking about that, and we kind of figured if this is the Mithril Mines with the context of what's going on, that's probably him talking. Let's just zoom back a little bit. It is the we'll listen. We'll listen to the voice. You be the final judge, please. The blood coursing through its planetary veins. According to Hojo, they're connected to Sephiroth. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like something to me. Uh, we thought maybe Reeves, but it's too serious for Reeves. And here we got outside again. I don't know where this is. Um, it could be... It, it's very rocky. It could be, like, leading to, um, uh, like, Barrett's hometown. But I doubt it. I think this is still near Junon. Um, but it it's kind of doesn't really say. You could call Chobo right there, which is really cool. I like that you can just sort of call one. I, I'm assuming it's going to be a side quest. Not a side quest, but, like, a... A main quest where you get uh, Gashal Greens and you can just summon them pretty now much whenever, Superman. which would make sense. I he them. Keep going a little bit, so and here we go. Uh, when I first saw this, I actually weirdly thought this was Sid's house, but no, this is probably Calm, the first real town of the game after you get out of Midgar during the big Sephiroth flashback. Um, this actual room doesn't appear in the original game, uh, at least in the Calm Inn. It could be in a different... Uh, housing com but the aesthetics are exactly the way they are in the original game that brown kind of look uh looks fantastic we fought him whatever happened he's alive in the top of Sephiroth, so clearly it's the calm flashback after five years doing who knows what and then the reunion scene from I'm assuming the lost uh, the, the the North Crater. I actually thought this well, part was from the North Crater as we well because you have Red Thirteen and Barrett there, and they have like a scene in the original game in the North Crater if you kind of choose that that kind of party. But I'm probably I'm more certain that it's the Mithra Mines, and this is just a new boss they put in there just to make a boss because why not? And we got our first clip of um fighting. Fighting, we get conf confirmation that Red 13 is fully playable, which is amazing, and there's a lot to unpack here, actually. One is, uh, you see, his stuff is called Vengeance Mode, which sounds amazing, uh, so I'm really looking forward to what his kind of secondary mode is. But over here, a couple things. One, low HP, 1432, 33 MP, 943 for Barrett, obviously he's not at max HP, 21 MP. Now, a lot of people were adamant about 7-2... Just, you keep your levels, you just import your save file, and you'll have all your stuff, and I just, I can't believe how that makes sense to those people, because this is, like, you already, you can get to level 50 really easily and have 9999 HP at the end of that game. So what are they going to do? Make it go to level 100, and then level 150 for part 3? So, obviously you do start over in your levels, you probably start at level 5 or something. Uh, the Mithra Mines is not very far away from where you leave off from Remake. So they're probably very low-leveled here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a mode where you could import your stuff and there's like, that's how you do hard mode or something? I don't know. The other thing to unpack, though, is right here you get these little weird blue ticks underneath their health. There's five for both Barrett and Red 13. And you'll see that throughout the rest of the trailer as well, which is, like, uh, interesting because I have no idea what those are. Uh, I, at first I was like, maybe they're... They're extra ATB gauges, but that sounds a little silly. I mean, five that'd be that'd be seven ATB gauges. That'd be ridiculous. And they're not like HP bars or anything like that. So I have no idea what these are. Um, though there is some, there are some maybe hints later in the trailer. The other part is you at the commands menu. You can see the little red materia. I don't know if that means you specifically have a summon ready or something. Not sure. Not sure at all. But let's keep going. We will learn a little bit more as we keep watching. So. Then we obviously have um, Barrett and confirmation that he has his overcharge back. So I'm assuming the basics for each character are going to remain the same. You'll see the same with Cloud as well because he has his Punisher mode. And Elena. Oh, that was great to see. Also, also in the Mithril Mines. You get a fun little boss battle here. You get see right here is the Punisher mode. Sorry, Aerith's butt right there. Uh, Punisher mode right here. You're playing as Cloud. Cloud, Tifa, Aerith. Which, again, lends itself to the idea that the Barrett and Red 13... Uh, area part was was the Mithril Mines because they, they split off into two parties. Uh, and you see here that they've used up some of those little blue uh, notches. So I, again, you still don't know what that means, but it's it's something, and they still have the, the material right there for the, the summon. Um, let's see, they both have limits. Right there. Oh, I thought, no, never mind, never mind. 
And here we go. Ward Shift is another one. I'm assuming, yeah, that's Aerith you're playing as. So I think they might have changed her. Because her thing was Tempest, I think, in the original game. So they changed that. Unless you can you can change it in the menu or something. But she looks like she has... Whoops, change the volume. Uh, it looks like she has a new, like, personal command or something. Which is pretty neat. Oh, my God. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. Here you have another uh, yellow goal marker as well right here. Jeez, this looks friggin' insanely nice. And more fighting. I'm just kind of looking around just to make sure. Operator mode, so yeah, same thing. And Cloud, I'm gonna just go back a little bit, because Cloud has new regular attacks. His, his combo looks different. Look at that. I mean, that actually... No, that was a strong attack. You can see it from down here, actually, because the guy's just hammering on the strong, uh, the strong attack, so... His new moves. There's Junon. Junon is the gigantic friggin' cannon city, uh, which is awesome. And other than Cosmo Canyon is like kind of the farthest we see in terms of the timeline in this trailer. Here's more some more Red 13 stuff going on. Fantastic. And here we go. Here's the first part of like the dual tech kind of stuff. Uh, Yuffie and Red 13 right there. They get to do one as well. And uh, it looks like Yuffie has um, her throw command back from intermission, which is great. I'm actually playing through that right now, so I haven't beaten it. So, uh, But I really like use, using Yuffie. It looks like she'll maintain that kind of uh, uh, battle style, which is fantastic. Oh, here it is. Over here, you can see there's also a yellow notch near the limit break. And I, again, no clue what that is, unless it's level two limit breaks. And I'm assuming that's what it is, is you can maybe get your limit gauge up once, and you could use Braver, or not Braver, uh, Cross Slash or... Uh, or ascension, and then if it goes again, maybe you get a notch, but you have to fill it a full way again if you decide not to use it, and that'll get you your second level limit breaks. I'm not sure. They only did two limit breaks per person in the first game, so I'm not sure how they're going to do that. Here we got Barrett and um, and Cloud. Oh my gosh! And I've been skipping stuff like the enemies. Like that was a little little cute little elephant enemy that you fight near um, near the Midgar Zolum right there. You also saw. Um, the little mandragoras earlier, like, oh my gosh, there's so much that I'm missing already. But anyways, let's keep going. I'm, I'm already being super long-winded about this. And the boat scene, right after Junon, where Yuffie has kind of her character moments of being uh, afraid of stuff. She's a monster that she can peer in the Genova fight. I'm glad they uh, did the whole kind of fake area thing that they did for the first Genova fight in um, in Seven Remake. Because I was like, man, that that's going to be a really big area on the ship to fight Genova. It's gonna, be, it's gonna look really unrealistic. So having the kind of fake battlefield is really—it makes a lot of sense. I'm also gonna go back a little bit again, and listen to the words that Sephiroth says because it seems important. Away from me. They say she's a monster that she can peer inside you, into the very depths of your soul. That she can become those you hate, those you fear, those you love. And there's Cloud as um, kind of when his, when his um, Mako poisoning and all of that kind of sets in. He's saying the reunion thing. Again, that leads into the end of um, uh, the North Crater stuff. That's like the beginning of disc two. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. You murdered my dad. The classic flashback with Tifa. Do you know that I killed her? So... Who is she? And that's kind of the weird, weird kind of, again, maybe timeline stuff or kind of, I don't know. Uh, but in the original trailer, or not, yeah, the, the teaser trailer for, for Rebirth, uh, Tifa says, you know, she's like doubted Cloud. She's like, what are you saying? That I died? That I'm some sort of monster? And then earlier in this trailer where it says Genova could like appear as people you love. And then here is, you know, I killed her. They're really playing up the Tifa, like, like. She didn't die in the original game. Clearly, she didn't. She just falls there, and, and that's when Cloud kills Sephiroth originally uh, in the calm flashback. But here, they're really playing up the whole, like, messing with Cloud's brain. And that could just be an extra little side, not a side quest, but a little side story kind of extra thing that they put in that wasn't in the original game just to add flavor. Or it could be a brand spanking new part of... Of, of the Destiny stuff. So who knows? But that's that's the intriguing part for me is the very beginning with the corpses uh, from the mid from, from the Midgar aftermath and then this part. Uh, that Those are the kind of only two new things. Everything else is very much following up of Seven's original path, which is really great. And then just, you know, the logo and then coming out next winter or uh, not next winter, uh, early, early next year. 
Um, but yeah, on two discs as well. Holy crap. But there you go. That's kind of like my little deep dive uh, in, into this trailer. I know I missed probably a ton. I know that people like Game Explain like to do these types of things and they like really research at first. But uh, as a guy who just likes FF7, I think this did, this did all the right stuff. We didn't get to see um, anything in between uh, Cosmo Canyon and and the Junon boat, which is kind of weird. That means we didn't get to see anything with Dine, anything anything with um, Barrett's village, and we didn't see anything with the Gold Saucer. Mind you, I assume the Gold Saucer wasn't shown because this is a much more serious trailer than than something with the Gold Saucer would show. Uh, but it makes me really interested because there's also a Costa del Sol. Um, and, and then if we go farther than Cosmo Canyon, there's no confirmation on that yet. But most people seem to believe that this game will continue on until the North Crater, which is very much the Empire Strikes Back all is lost moment of Final Fantasy VII, even more so than uh, the ending of the first disc. And we all know what happens at that point. Uh, but man, they showed uh, some great stuff here. Really, really good stuff. Shame we didn't get to see Sid or Vincent um, or, or, you know, uh, but, but I'm floored. I'm very happy. I'm very much looking forward to this. But please tell me what you guys think. Are you a hardcore FF7 fan and you knew everything that was there and I didn't provide anything new? Uh, or are you a more casual FF7 fan? Maybe you played the original just once or twice a long time ago and this was like a real fun refresher. Um, but yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, hopefully FF7 Rebirth will be really good. And um, I'm kind of looking into the first steps of maybe Let's Playing the original PlayStation 1 FF7 for the channel, probably early next year as well, right before this game comes out. Uh, but if that's something you want to see, please tell me in the comments as well, uh, because I, I obviously only want to do very long RPGs if you guys want to see that. But anyways, guys, with that, I'm Phil in the Blanks. See you next level.